All right, welcome, welcome back to our, our our YouTube channel, the family YouTube channel. And so we got a little change of pace here today. Uh, this is Energy Explained, where we normally talk about energy topics. I'm Justin Rao. We normally bring in my father, Vikram Rao. But I really wanted to talk today about COVID vaccines. And we have here my mother, Susan Rao, who happens to be an accomplished biomedical researcher. She's an expert in genetics and genomics, the intestine, and how our body works. And growing up, she would always tell me all about it, of which I retained some. Um, and so uh, we're here to talk about that today. But it's also an interesting day because we grew up in Houston. There's sort of a snow apocalypse in Texas. Have you talked to, to our, my brothers? Mary? Yep. Yeah. They're staying inside. <laughs> all right. Right. We had a bit of a seven days of winter weather out here in the Netherlands and there was the Dutch love skating on natural ice. It's a huge pastime. And so we went out in the natural ice, too. But it, it was an absolute skating frenzy out here. So I hope you're doing well in North Carolina. I hope Colin Mitchell are doing well in Houston. But on to uh, the vaccine. So with all these vaccines, there's all these ones out there and it's all technologies. But let's talk about the so-called mRNA ones, messenger RNA ones with Pfizer's combination with BioNTech's uh, a vaccine, Moderna's and others out there. They've gotten a lot of hype because they've been more effective at the different variants that have emerged. They've been overall more effective than their traditional vaccine counterparts. So rightfully so, they're getting a lot of hype. But I want to talk about the core technology and understand, because what you've heard said to me privately is that you're actually more hyped about the core technology. Is that right? Yeah. Well, so let's talk about it. So start, starting with mRNA, let's start right there before we get to vaccine. What's mRNA and how does it differ from DNA? Okay. I think that's really important thing to raise and to, way to start, Justin, because um, We've all heard that DNA is our genetic code. I think everybody knows yeah. that. So what everyone may not realize is that the cells of our body, um, if you think of them like a bag of soup, okay? okay? okay. The DNA is inside, uh, imagine a little bag in the middle of that, like a muslin bag, like you put in when you're making soup and you're putting in yeah. herbs or something. Yeah. Okay, so imagine another bag inside the big bag. And that's where all the DNA is packaged. Okay. okay? It's safely tucked away, okay. away from the rest of the mechanisms and op op the operations. The so-called nuclear itself. DNA, right? I remember that from... It's nuclear yeah, DNA. Yeah. It's in the nucleus, yeah. in the nucleus. Yeah. Okay. It's got the genetic code. Okay. But the genetic code has to be functionalized. In other words, it codes for, for proteins, which are the building blocks yeah. of our body. Yeah. So how do we get from that in the nucleus? Well, here's where messenger RNA comes in. It's that we have in the nucleus a process that we call transcription. We use the same word from an English language where we transcribe that information that's in the DNA into a messenger RNA. Okay. And then it exits from the yeah. nucleus yeah. out into the main cell soup, which yeah. we call the cytosol or cell soup. Okay. Out there, it encounters the machinery that allows its code to be translated, again, using another translated now into a different language, namely the language of protein. Okay. And as we said, proteins are the building bodies, building blocks of, our, of all cells of our bodies. They're also antibodies. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's what mRNA does in normal biology. So let, okay? let me, let me just look, because I don't know about this stuff. So yeah. it, you just described sort of sending messages out to the other built the sort of machinery of the cell to build proteins, yeah. building blocks right. of life. Does the nuclear DNA also get messages in? It gets messages in, in the sense that that's how we respond to environmental cues. Got Let's it. say we need to rev up. Yeah. Uh, you're an athlete and you want to rev up muscle in the muscle cells. Yeah. There are various signals that yeah. can get into the nucleus to say, make do more transcribing of certain key genes. Yeah, there's all sorts of very complex regulations of signals coming in. Okay, so but the DNA doesn't come out. The, okay, the DNA what and comes the, out is the mRNA. Okay, so then okay, so now we have a little idea of mRNA is is the sort of the communication technology from the nuclear DNA the the sort of code of life to proteins, the, the bricks yep. and mortar of life. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. That, that the DNA is the blueprint. We have our bricks and mortar. Yep. Now, how do mRNA vaccines work? Okay. So what's the breakthrough of, of these vaccines is the idea that they are using mRNA as the, 
as the trigger, the thing that's being injected into your body. So now we have to step back and talk about what is what this mRNA, what's an mRNA too? Well, you've, I think probably everyone's seen pictures of yeah. the virus yeah. and it's got all these spike proteins, yeah. okay? Yeah. And you probably even know that it's the spike protein that allows the virus to attach to a cell and get into a cell. Yeah. So those spike proteins, once we understood the basic biology of this virus, was recognized that they are critical. Okay. And if you wanted to disarm that virus, what would be a good thing to attack would be the spike protein. Okay. Okay. So once the Chinese um, scientists published the complete genetic sequence of the virus, people, the other scientists were able to say, aha, here's the sequence for the spike protein. We can now make the mRNA for just for that. Okay, just, just for, for that, for just for protein. that little part, okay. Just for that little part. And now we're gonna, a key thing that was a, sort of, again, part of the breakthrough technology was how to package that so that it's packaged now and that now it gets injected into our bodies. It's going to go into cells yeah. and cells are going to start translating that mRNA into spike protein. They're going okay? to start producing a lot of the spike protein. They're going to start producing exactly. just the I've, thing I've on the vaccinated. crown of the corona. Yeah, yeah it's You've cool. Been I mean, I've been vaccinated, so it's cool to think now yeah. I'm pumping out spike protein. Yeah. And spike protein is a foreign protein to my body. Yeah. So how's my body going to react in the normal way? It says, wow, foreign protein, I've got to make antibodies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, in, that's the essence of, of how it works. Okay. So now there's a, that we're sending a message to the nuclear DNA. The message is, please. No, no, we're not sending it into the nucleus at all. We're not. That's okay. Really that's where important. I got lost. Okay. So we're sending that, a message. That's mess what. Yeah. Because that's one of the misconceptions. We're not touching the genetic material. Okay. We're sending the message. The message is only going to, it's going to go in and it's just going to stay out in the oh, system. Oh, it's just staying okay. out of, in the not, ecosystem of the cell. Oh. Exactly, where it encounters the machinery that makes proteins. Oh, okay. Which is a complex machinery. I don't want to take the time to okay. explain that on this forum. I yeah. see. Okay, so now Get the it? cell starts making this protein. The DNA, the the the, the building, the, the blueprint of our of our cells is not changed whatsoever. It's not sa It's safely away in that muslin bag in the middle, in the ah, nucleus. Okay. And out here in the in the cytosol, yeah. we, where we still our cells are still making all their normal things. They go. It's not interrupting normal protein synthesis. But in addition, along comes this new little message, and so the the, the thing says, okay, here's a message. I'll churn out the protein. I see. Okay, I see. so now we have circulating in our bodies spike protein. I see. Uh, and that gets detected by the immune cells. Uh, okay, I see. So now I... Okay, so uh, now we're going to send the, the little message into our body. It's not going to go into our blueprint of our life. It's going to go into right. our cells and talk to the machinery of the cells yeah. um, and start producing a ton of this spike protein. So now you have a ton of this. You, because you've had the vaccine, have a ton of this in your body. Now your body starts attacking it. Yeah. Because it's a foreign protein, and if the real yeah. coronavirus shows up, it already has the guns aimed at it. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Now, in terms of vaccine development, we've heard, we've read that um, they're more effective, these mRNA vaccines against the emerging variants. As well, we've read that boosters can be designed more quickly. Can you help us understand why this method is more effective at iterative design as well as a higher overall efficacy? Yeah, so I think, again, just talking about the advantages, one is just let's keep in mind the re that it's really specific. Okay. Okay? You're only making, anti you're only making that one protein, you're only going to make antibodies to that. So whereas, let's say, older vaccines might be a whole inactivated virus. Right which will generate lots of different antibodies and some might cross-react and do bad things. So it's very specific. And then because we're focusing on that one protein, as we get variants, we, they get sequenced very quickly these days. And so the, the, <coughs> the vaccine can be modified by changing the sequence of the mRNA that's packaged. I see, okay? I see. So we're and now here, why it might be more, what I think hasn't yet been addressed in the U.S., but I know it's a big thing under discussion and, 
and probably soon will be in Europe. Europe's a little behind on generally approving these things just because of the complexity of so many nations having to sort of yeah. come together. Yeah. Um, but here, that's it's it's hoped that because that's it's just it's a minor tweak in yeah. the technology. Yeah. All the packaging, everything else would be the same. Yeah. You just have a little different that you can skip phase one trials for sure. Yeah. And that that will that it'll allow a more rapid movement of a new virus through the regulatory process, no, no. a new vaccine through the regulatory process. Yeah, I've read that they would be approved without a phase three trial, with only a phase two trial for safety and antibody response, not necessarily a 30,000 person, yeah, five month exactly. trial. Yeah, okay, exactly. so it's it's sort of a laser targeted approach. We're only gonna produce that one, that most for, the most foreign of the foreign proteins. And so we can, when body recognizes that in the corona, the coronavirus itself, it would attack it. Now, um, how excited are you about this technology? This is the first consumer um, uh, approved mRNA vaccine to my knowledge. But how excited are you about this technology generally? For is this a Nobel Prize? I mean, it's giving a Nobel Prize because it saved all these lives. But but is this is this something that 10, 20, 30 years ago we might look back on and say that's the penicillin moment of our generation? I, I really think it is uh, because it is the culmination of from the initial discovery of the genetic code to uh, all the subsequent work of understanding all of this transcription translation mechanisms that has allowed us now to come with something that's not just an esoteric bit of biological knowledge, but has incredible practical clinical application. And and, um, and, and science kind of came through here, right? I mean, like we've heard about scientific technologies like gene therapy being really hyped and there's the whole like hype cycle yeah. and then the, the trial of disillusionment and all of this stuff. But yeah. here there was hype. They delivered. And I actually read they Moderna made the vaccine in like a week. Cause like you said, after it was sequenced, it was yeah. just kind of for you and for people like you, it was like almost easy. Is that right? Well, they, I, I believe that both of the, those companies had been working on the idea of mRNA right. vaccines for some time. Sure. I think they might have initially been targeting cancer, in fact. Interesting. So once you get the, and the packaging is, is key. So you can put different, as we said, you can put different sequences in it. So once COVID w hit, was upon us, it was relatively easy to say switch from making cancer vaccines to making a COVID vaccine. So this was yeah. kind of a perfect timing. They had the package a ready. Perfect timing. They had a, we, a virus that was amenable, had a particular protein that they could code for. But it sounds like this is a little more focused than anything else we've done. So while it was perfect timing and perfect conditions, your belief is it will be something that we generally use and we get used to using and it will be a general technology. I agree because I think that we're going. This is not going to be the first uh, virus that likely jumps from animals to yeah. humans. Yeah. We're going to face for. And again, I mentioned the the knowledge on the side of the um, mRNA, etc. Equally important is the knowledge, the ability to understand viruses, including their really detailed structure. So that knowledge going hand in hand. So as we go forward. That's the again, as new viruses are discovered, uh, getting to understand their structure and their biology, what which things are critical to right. allow them to infect a cell is equally important. And that's why if you ask me about a Nobel Prize, it would honestly probably be very difficult to come down to just uh, two or three names. Right. Because it's this com confluence of two different fields, virology and what we call molecular biology. So. Um, but we'll see. Well, there's some heroes out there and we've heard some names yeah. and it's be interesting when the dust settles, how that story emerges. But what yeah. you're saying is, one, the hype is warranted. The hype on yeah. these vaccines is warranted. The hype on the technology is warranted. If anything, it could be a bigger deal than we think because it's a generalizable tool yes. for vaccine development. It could affect anything that we could think by eliminating problem cell multiplication situ like cancer, it yep. could be applicable. And yep. so it's worthy of the hype. And it was a perfect confluence of readiness for it to be ready for this global event. Yes. 
Yep. Now okay. your you, you spent your career um, applying for grants with public funding into basic science and research. I know because you'd stay up late at night and I'd come and <laughs> talk to you. Um, now you're in charge of the NIH or the NSF or whatever the big funding agency is. Now, you've seen this. What do you do to make America's scientific community the, the leading, the lead the world in this foundational technology? What's your next step? So I, I think that the, the, we haven't talked about the disadvantages of these, okay. these vaccines. So I need to mention that. So as probably everyone's heard, the disadvantages of the, of the first two mRNA um, vaccines are that they have to be stored at sub-zero hmm. temperatures. Yeah. The Pfizer at minus 70 and the, um, the Moderna at minus 20. And that has limited their application. They're even in not just in um, poorer countries, but in rural America, yeah. there are yeah. clinics that don't have liquid uh, nitrogen or whatever sitting around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that is limited. So I think a really important area is developing mRNA vaccines that are stable at well uh, at at least refrigeration. Commercial and refrigeration better. kind so, of deal. Yeah. So there's one company in Tübingen, I believe, CureVac. CureVac, yeah. Is, yeah, who has already, um, they've just started, I think, in December, the phase three trial for one that's stable in re at normal refrigeration mm. temperatures, okay? So I think that's really an important area. And then we can take one further step back. There's a company here in Gaithersburg, Maryland, called Novavax, yeah. which instead of... in injecting the spike protein mRNA into our bodies and asking our bodies to make it. They are putting the mRNA into insect cells in a Petri dish okay. and having these cells churn out spike protein. Spike protein. Then they had, they've figured out how to package just the protein okay. so that the protein goes in directly. And that, um, that vaccine that's as i say it's it's not here yet we haven't finished the trials on on that uh um but it's also stable at at, at more re reasonable temperatures so okay. again getting a vaccine that can be used worldwide in all sorts of conditions i think that's i would definitely put money on that okay and and, and um, building out the technology around accessibility around different variants of it do you grow the proteins right. in a dish in the body yeah. and so forth and you want to see all of that because your belief is we're going to need this and we're going to need to be able to produce it a heck of a lot faster than we did the first time around because then it's going to happen. This is going to happen again. Right. And then the other thing is that I would talk to the social sciences, you know, and say that the other, uh, another important area to spend money on is the sort of thing that you do, big data algorithms to try to predict how better to roll it out. When, yeah. If yeah. you have a new pandemic, yeah. this has been, it's been chaotic in the U S it's been it's even further behind in Europe. I guess Israel is leading the world, perhaps, in getting the vaccine out. But I think that that's an area that needs, it needs, uh, you know, data scientists to be able to say, here's how you, here's how you do it. Yeah, I, here's I, how you get it effectively to the people who need it. Yeah, quickly, etc. I, I hear what you're saying. The yeah. the modern vaccine supply chain involves mRNA technology for creating the proteins for the body to recognize the foreign invading yeah. uh, a virus, yeah. but also a production capacity and also a distribution strategy yeah. that is modernized as well. And that's yeah. where you see the next thing hit. You might go from 5 million deaths to 50,000 because every aspect is improving. It's not just one. Well, yeah. this Look, this has been super illuminating. I obviously was a little bit turned around on the whole issue with the nuclear DNA, so I appreciate you sorting <laughs> that out for me in real time and lot live on the air. Um, well, Mom, super appreciate guests sitting in with us. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'm sure Good. Dad will love watching it. Um, and <laughs> and for our viewers out there, we always remind you to uh, hit subscribe for our content like this, as, as well as check out our past videos because we have uh, we have others in the channel featuring my father and myself. But mommy, we really, I super appreciate it. It was super fun for me and to include you in the project, but also hear from a true expert on this. So thank, thank you. Good, okay. Bye-bye.